For just shy of a century, humans have been making movies about robots. Now, the shoe is on the other foot. Meet Blabdroid. Pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, watch out. Hello. I am filming a documentary, and I would love for you to be in it. A fleet of these little guys are at work making the first robot-produced documentary, but there are human overlords working on the project, and here to tell us about them uh, is the creator of these robots, uh, Alex Rebin, joins us now by Skype. Uh, Alex, as, as a former documentary maker myself, I'm a little worried about uh, being put out of a job here. What can a <laughs> robot do as a filmmaker that a good old-fashioned person can't? Well, first, I want to say that these will never uh, replace a real documentary filmmaker because they, frankly, are, are kind of stupid. Um, <laughs> the but robots what these are, are able stupid. to do um, that a have you met documentary <laughs> filmmakers? <laughs> um, they require an editor later to go through the footage and make a story out of it. Okay, so um, I get to log the footage. The robots do the interviews. Right, right. And what these robots are able to do that a uh, person on the street has a hard time doing is getting really honest answers from people hmm. and part of it is because when people interact with the robots uh, the robots are kind of non-judgmental they don't really understand what you're saying and the way they're designed is to be a sort of naive young robot um, so filmmakers have told us that these robots were able to get responses from people that they would they themselves have a hard time getting and the but what does the robot say it just sits there or it asks questions it asks questions so I can play one here I like your name I'm going to ask you some questions Okay. After you answer and press the green button, and we will continue. So, if you did not hear what I said, so the robots ask people questions, and after every question, they press the button to get a new question. And the robots will ask questions like, um, Who do you love most in the world? A cute redhead called June. Who do I love most? What's your name? Robin. Robin. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> But other questions like, um, if you died tomorrow, what would you regret the most? Not spending enough time with my dad before he died. I switched out her shampoo for a nair hair remover when she wasn't looking. So questions that you maybe wouldn't tell a person, but people open up to the robots. Yeah, so people seem willing to open up to the robot in a way they might not if a person was sitting there. It seems like almost like a, a therapist or a diary because there isn't someone, you know, with judgmental eyes looking at you. You're able to, even though you, I guess in some level you know that the camera's recording this and perhaps millions of people will see it, people have this weird response to the robot. So I believe in the 60s or 70s there was a study um, which was dubbed the Elijah Effect. And uh, this was a computer program that would act like a psychologist. So it might ask you, how are you doing? And if you reply bad, it might just reply back. Why are you bad? Um, so it would be kind of, it's not very intelligent, but the way it responded made people connect to it. And actually found some of the researchers that programmed that were crying in front of it because of what it, what huh. it did. So what's the plan now? You send these robots out and they ask your pre-programmed questions and then you cobble together those answers? What's, how's this gonna work? For places like film festivals or galleries or installation spaces, uh, people can come take these robots out. We actually encourage them to leave the space with them and, and be alone with them. That's that's where we find the best activities happen. But the other thing we'd like to do is get these out in the hands of everyone. So we're trying to uh, commercialize these so people can have their own robots, which could do things like connect to their cell phone. And they could have different questions every day that they could share with their friends on, on social media and things of that sort. So we want to make this project bigger than we could do ourselves by getting these in the hands of the people. Okay, Alex Rebin, father of the Blab Droid. Good luck. It's super interesting stuff and great video, and thanks for uh, telling us a bit about it. Thank you for having me. That will do it for us for tonight. We will fold things up. Hope to see you back here tomorrow.